some people send their children off to college and knowing that that will be a trying time for them as the parent and knowing that it'll be a time of experimentation for the child to find out who they are and make new friends. And some people send their children off to college, not knowing that that will be the last time that they will see them alive again. And that was the case where the parents of Yashihiro Hattori. And if you want to know more about this case, please continue watching. Pictured here was 16 year old Yoshi as he was known, but his birth name is Yashihiro Hattori. And unfortunately, on October 31st of 1992, he knocked on the wrong door because he was supposed to go to a Halloween party that he had been invited to. But after he knocked on this door, he was shot and killed by a person inside. Yoshi, as he was known to his friends and family, was a 16-year-old Japanese exchange student who was on his way to a Halloween party in Baton Rouge, Louisiana in 1992 with his friend Webb, and they were lost. He said, I didn't know that part of town too well, and I guess I took a couple of wrong turns. And he told this in a recent interview that he was given, and it turns out that the two boys were decked out in fancy dress clothes that I guess they thought they had found the right place, but they made an innocent mistake that cost Yoshi his life. And a media frenzy followed later with the massive campaign to change America's gun laws. And his parents were behind this change in to try to change these gun laws. His host family and his parents um, talked about the day that they realized their lives had changed. And his father said that even though it's been all these years, he feels like his son is still in America, but he has to realize at certain points that his son is dead and has been for all this time and he will never see him again. But they talked about how Yoshi was as a person and they said Yoshi was crazy about rugby. And they said at first he was not so active about going to America, they said. But I guess all that changed when Yoshi passed a test for an American field service um, trip. And that was a worldwide exchange organization for young people. And they said he became so eager about coming to the U.S. And he said that he wants to make sure that wherever he goes, he can make that country a second home. And he also wrote in his paper, I can make Japanese cooking like tempura cutlets for host families and introduce the living way of Japanese and so in the summer of 1992, Yoshi took off for a year in the U.S. And he was met by his host family at um, in Dallas, which was the Haymaker family. And they drove him back to their home in Baton Rouge. And I'm pretty sure him being from um, Japan or being a new student here in America... He felt like, you know, there were things that he hadn't seen. So he was very happy. I'm pretty sure he was, you know, 
thinking about all the new friends that he was going to make and the new people he was going to meet, you know, because his friends and family, you know, they said that even though he wasn't eager at first to come to the U.S. after he entered his um, paper into the program and he won, I guess that's when he realized that, okay, this is finally coming true. So he got excited about it. And I'm pretty sure when he got here, he was just so ready to dive into everything and learn new things about, you know, the place where he was. And, you know, like I said, making new friends as a 16 or 17 year old would be. Dr. Holly Haymaker and her husband, Dick Haymaker, said that they had exchange, uh, hosted exchange students before, but they noticed that Yoshi made an immediate impression on them and people that he met because he was so outgoing. And they recalled the kids at McKinley High School loved him because he was such a free spirit. Her husband agreed. He was a really, really extraordinary guy. He was, he was life. He moved through space like a dancer. And, you know, that, that is how most outgoing um, teenagers are. You know, they, they, you know, they, they fit in so well, some of them, and then some of them not so well, but fortunately for Yoshi he was one of the ones that moved through life so well it seems like and people really loved him so he didn't have a problem with making new friends wherever he went and I think that that was a good thing but on Saturday October 17th um of that year he said that they went to a um movie dr holly and his wife went to a movie while yoshi and webb set off for the party that they were dressed to go to and they said yoshi was dressed as john travolta from saturday night fever and he had been watching a lot of john travolta movies and webb says um he was dressed as an ancient an accident victim excuse me wearing a neck brace from a swimming pool injury earlier that summer with a few bandages for added effect and so the pair set off looking for the house that they were supposed to go to where the party was supposed to be held and eventually he eventually they ended up on this street and they he said we saw this house it had halloween decorations on it and three cars in the driveway and the address and the address was 10311 whereas we wanted to go to 10131 but i just saw the address and said oh this is it and webb said webb and yoshi then knocked on the door but got no answer they then saw a woman open the side garage door and peer out before abruptly slamming it in their faces and i think this is so strange because they know that it's halloween so of course they're gonna see people dressed in all kinds of you know different costumes and outfits so i don't understand why she would see them and slam their slam the door in their faces especially since she you know saw two teenage kids Up then said they were walking away sort of confused and he started to walk down the block wondering if it was a different house and then he said that um but then someone opened the door which was a guy by the name of rodney pierce i guess he lived there so he opened the door and he was a 30-year-old supermarket butcher and he was holding a 44 Magnum uh, revolver shotgun and Yoshi turned back towards him. He was very eager to get to the party and didn't understand. I guess that Pierce had a gun. Maybe he thought it was a Halloween thing and Webb said, 
he was light on his feet and just saying in a very boisterous way, we're here for the party. We're here for the party, sort of happy. Pierce shouted, freeze, but Yoshi seemed to understand and kept misunderstand and kept walking towards Pierce. Pierce fired once, hitting Yoshi in the chest and slammed the door. Now, that is kind of crazy that, you know, if you hear a kid saying we're here for the party and, you know, you're going to say, you know, there's no party, get out of my yard, and then you might slam the door. But if the child is saying we're here for the party, we're here for the party, you know, you're going to wonder what are they talking about? And then, you know, say, you know, there's no party here and get away from my door and then slam the door. You're not going to shoot the person, you know, because obviously if they're saying something about a party, they have the wrong house, you know. And I think this man reacted a little too quick and didn't think about what he was hearing. After Yoshi was shot, um, his host family was leaving the theater across town and they had watched the last of the Mohicans and um Holly recalled saying to her husband that she was glad that this country isn't as violent as that movie um portrayed anymore and um after that um they um got a call and let them know that Yoshi had been shot and so they raced to the police station where Webb was sitting alone, unaware of what happened to his friend after the ambulance drove him away. His parents broke the news. The worst, the first words out of his mouth were, his poor mother, Dick said, that was the beginning of this whole story that wrecked the head had Tiro's lives Yoshi's parents learned the news down the line from a worker with the exchange program his mother Maiko retreated to her son's childhood bedroom and cried two days after the killing of Hatero, the Hatero's flew to New Orleans I was terrified Holly recalled I was to take care of their son and he was killed, but the Heteros had only only concern for the haymakers, she said. The first words Yoshi's mother said, We're said we're we're here. How is well? And that shows you the strength that these people had because they were, you know, concerned for, you know, Yoshi's friend when they had lost their son. So this shows you that they, you know, were concerned for the host family as well, because I'm pretty sure they knew that just like them, Yoshi had made an impact on their lives as well. So he became their child as well. So they were, you know, showing concern for them. And I think that's a great thing and that they didn't blame them for his death. Came a whole media circus. Police initially released Pierce without charging, assuming he was within his rights to shoot a trespasser. But after complaints from Louisiana's governor and Japan's council in New Orleans, he was charged with manslaughter. His lawyers worked hard to establish his actions as self-defense. They said Pierce, who was no killer, simply one of your neighbors, who was reacting to Yoshi's extremely unusual way of moving. Meanwhile, Bonnie Pierce, Rodney's wife, who first opened the door, told the court Yoshi had scared her and she had ordered her husband to get the gun. The defense worked in May 1993. Rodney Pierce was acquitted after a jury deliberation of just three hours. And I think that this is, you know, very strange. And, you know, that he would be acquitted of that, seeing as, you know, 
Yoshi was just simply saying, I'm here for the party, I'm here for the party. And he didn't at least take time to say, you know, what party? There's no party here. You have the wrong house. You know, get out of my yard. And then he could have closed the door. Like I said before, he didn't have to shoot the boy. But if you guys like this video, please don't forget to leave a like and also leave a comment as to what you think about this case down below. And if you haven't already, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And until next time, guys, I'll see you on the next one.